Hello students, welcome to the class of economics for class 11. Let me give you my quick introduction. I am Regna Madhani and I am going to help you to learn economics for class 11 and class 12 as well. Now in class 11, statistics is the part of economics. So we are going to start with statistics. In statistics, I am going to start today unit 1. Unit 1 is going to cover two chapters. In chapter 1, we are going to learn about what is economics all about and in chapter 2, we are going to learn what is statistics all about. Today, I am going to start with chapter 1. Now, chapter 1 is very easy because it has only two parts. In one part, we are going to cover different definitions given by different economists and in chapter 2, we are going to understand the difference between economic and non-economic activities. Now, before proceeding towards the definition of economics, let me tell you from where the word economics is being derived. So, economics is derived from the Greek word oikos and nime. Oikos means the house and nime means the management. So, basically economics was something supposed to be house management. But there came few economists who gave us various definitions of economics. Let us study who are these economists and how Economic got its proper definition. Now, the first economist who gave the definition of properly or who gave the first definition of economics in a proper form was Adam Smith. If we trace the history of economics, we have to go long back in the year 1776 when Adam Smith wrote a book, An Inquiry into the Nature and Significance and, in, and its Significance of Wealth to Nation. An Inquiry into the Nature and Significant Wealth of Nation. Adam Smith, who, uh, uh, Adam Smith is an economist who gave the first proper definition of economics. He is also known as classical economist and father of economics. He was an European economist. Now, he gave the definition in terms of wealth. How he defined economics? He defined economics as a science of wealth. Now, when I talk about the classical economics, I mean to say only production of goods. So, what Adam Smith wrote in his book was, how we are going to use the natural resources and produce the goods, which becomes the wealth of the na nation. Now, wealth actually means the money. But here, Adam Smith says that all the goods which are able to satisfy the human wants are also considered as wealth of the nation. Hence, the definition given by Adam Smith was the wealth definition of economics, which says that economics is the science of wealth. I hope you understood. Also, Adam Smith is known as father of economics because he was the first person who gave us the definition of economics. Now after Adam Smith who came? So after Adam Smith came Alfred Marshall Adam Smith was a European economist also Alfred Marshall was European economist. Adam Smith lived in Scotland whereas Alfred Marshall lived in London. Now, Alfred Marshall wrote a book, Principles of Economics, in the year 1890. In this book, he gave the definition of economics in terms of exchange. He said that not only production of goods, but also its exchange with the money, that means the consumption of a good, is to be considered a very, very important part of economics. Thus, he gave the definition as economics is a study of man, how he utilizes ordinary business of life. Economics is a study of man in ordinary business of life. Which means he wanted to tell us how he is able to earn the income and how he spent the income to increase the material welfare. He was the one who shifted the definition to welfare from wealth. Wealth definition was given by Adam Smith. Whereas Alfred Marshall gave us the definition in context of Welfare. So also the definition given by Alfred Marshall is known as uh, welfare definition of economics. He gave non-classical definition of economics. 
Now, what is the difference between classical definition and non-classical definition? Classical definition basically deals with only production of goods and services. Whereas, neoclassical definition uh, relates with the exchange of goods and services. Is it clear? So, he is also known as founder of neoclassical economics. Adam Smith is known as father of economics. Whereas, Alfred Washer is known as founder of neoclassical economics. He gave the definition that economics is a study of man in ordinary business of life. That means how a man is going to earn his income and how he is going to spend it to increase the material wealth. Now, after Alfred Marshall came Lionel Robinson. Now, all the three economists were the European economists. Lionel Robinson was also from London and he studied from London School of Economics. If you ever visit London School of Economics, you will find a building which was named with his name, Lionel Robinson's building. Now, he gave the definition of economics in terms of scarcity. Now, what does scarcity mean? Scarcity is something which we are going to deal with our day-to-day -day life. Now, Adam Smith says that we are going to use the natural resources and we are going to produce it. Alfred Marshall said that we are not going to only produce the goods, also we are going to consume it. So we are going to uh, take the exchange factor in the, while defining economics. Lionel Robinson in the year 1932 wrote a very famous essay, an essay on nature and significance of economic science. In this essay, he told us about three fundamental existence of human behavior that were human wants are unlimited, Resources are limited and resources have alternative uses. What Marshall wanted to say was that God has created human being with unlimited want. But God has given us limited resources. Also not only the resources are limited, resources have alternative uses. When I say that resources have alternative uses, I mean to say that water can be used for n number of things. Money can be used for n number of things. Land can be used for farming, for industry, so and so. So when human wants are unlimited, definitely demand will be very high. When the resources are limited, definitely production will be low. And whatever input we have the production, again that input have alternative uses. So what will happen? In an economy always demand will be high and production will be low. So when demand is high and production is low, this is termed as scarcity. So Lionel Robinson gave his definition of scarcity that Economics is the relation between unlimited end and scarce resources which have alternative uses. We face the problem of scarcity in our day-to-day -day life. Like at present we are locked down. So definitely in our house the resources are very limited. Anyhow we are trying to fill the demand. But then you face scarcity daily. Isn't it? And not only this. After the, we are going to overcome this virus, the entire world economy is going to face a huge amount of scarcity. So scarcity is also one of the reasons why you all are studying economics. Lionel Robinson uh, wrote a very famous quote that human wants what they can't have. So he is always remembered with his quote that human wants what they can't have. Now all the three economists were from Europe. And after that came the fourth economist, John Anthony Samuelson. John Anthony Samuelson. He was an American economist. And he was the first American economist who won the Nobel Prize in Economics in the year 1970. He died in the year 2009. That means all of you were born by that date. Right? He also received a very uh, noble award that is uh, a highest award in science by America uh, in the year, uh, what do you say, in the year 1996 by Bill Clinton. John Samuelson is regarded as father of modern economics. If Adam Smith is regarded as father of economics, John Samuelson is regarded as father of modern economics. While he was receiving a Nobel Prize, it was said that Samuelson is a person who has contributed highest amount 
in lifting up the economics where scientific analysis is involved. He gave the term, he gave the most appropriate and satisfactory definition of economics. Why his definition is considered to be the most appropriate and satisfactory? Because he included all the three aspects given by Adam Smith, Marshall and Robinson. He included the concept of wealth, welfare and scarcity and he defined economics in terms of growth. What he wrote, economics is how man in society chose with or without the use of money to employ the scarce resources which have alternative uses for production and consumption now and in future by a people and group of society. So when he talked about production, he was talking about wealth. When he talked about production as well as consumption, he was talking about exchange. When he talked about how man and society are going to employ the scarce resources, he was talking about scarcity. So he included all the three factors and he gave the most appropriate and satisfactory definition which was as follow. Economics is how man and society chose with or without the use of money to employ the scarce resources which have alternative uses for production as well as for consumption and uh, you, for now and in future to be used by the people and group of society. So I hope you understood difference between all the four definitions. First definition was given by Adam Smith in contest of wealth. That is economics is a science of wealth. Second definition was given by Professor Marshall in contest of welfare. That is economics is a study of men in ordinary business of life. Third definition was given by Robinson in contest of scarcity. That is economics is a relation between unlimited and and means of scarce resources which have alternative uses. And last definition was given by Samuelson, which is the most appropriate and satisfactory definition. I hope you understood difference between all the four definitions and how then uh, time and then these economists came and defined the definition of economics. Now, in my next video, I am going to help you to understand difference between economics and non-economic activity. Till then, stay safe, stay healthy. Be in your home and keep washing your hands. Thank you.